it's getting cooler out there and there's snow on the ground and winter is here so i thought for the rest of the month of january we would talk about winter so we're going to start that off by talking about the science of snow so what is snow by definition, snow is frozen water vapor, and they are usually crystals that fall from a cloud. But do you know what clouds are made up of? They're actually made up of water vapor and air, which is technically invisible. But what we see as clouds are the water droplets or ice crystals that are reflecting the sunlight. Since clouds are technically invisible, when we get really close to them, they kind of disappear. But if we zoom in, like it is on this picture, to a cloud, there's also some other things that are found in that cloud. We're going to call those specks. These specks are so small you can't even see them, but they are what are going to become the start of a snow crystal. These specks can be made up of a lot of things, but here are some examples. Specks can be ash from maybe an erupting volcano or even a forest fire. They could be pollen from a flower, salt from an ocean, dirt from really anywhere, and they can even be the bacteria that you can find living on plant leaves. See, specks can be a lot of things, but what they turn into is snow. Now you may be wondering, how do these specks become snow? Well, what happens as those specks get colder and colder and water from the cloud sticks to it, they eventually freeze and form as a snow crystal. Now, do you notice how I'm only saying snow crystal? I'm not saying snowflake. There's a difference. An individual piece of snow is called a snow crystal, but when snow crystals bump into each other and stick together, they form snowflakes. Did you guys know that hundreds or even thousands of tiny snow crystals can form one snowflake? That's a lot of snow. When you look at snow crystals, there are so many different shapes and patterns that you can find, and no two are exactly alike. Snow crystal shapes depend on how wet or cold the cloud is. The snow crystals will change shape as it gets more wet or even more cold, but they stop growing after they fall from the cloud. So when you see a snow crystal, that's what it looked like right when it left the cloud. But there are three main shapes of snow crystals that we are going to look at. First, we are going to look at stars. They're also called dendrites, which means tree-like because it kind of looks like they have branches. But stars have six arms from a center point and the center point would be that speck. And they form when a cloud is very wet and usually around five degrees Fahrenheit. Next is a plate. They kind of look like stars. They're going to be six-sided, but they don't have arms. They're going to be smaller than stars, around one millimeter or smaller, which is pretty small. And they form when the cloud is not quite wet enough to form arms. So it's usually a little bit warmer or a little bit colder than five degrees Fahrenheit to make plate snow crystals. And finally, we have the column-shaped snow crystals. They're very tiny, only about half a millimeter across, and are the smallest type of snow crystal. They're kind of shaped like pencils. You know those six-sided ones you used to use? Picture that. They form very high in the clouds when it is super cold outside. And this is the type of snow that ends up making it really slippery outside. Now, have you guys also noticed that I've been saying the number six a lot? All snow crystals have six sides. No matter their shape, they're always going to have six sides. If it's a perfect snowflake, it would be six-fold symmetrical. So if you picture a pie and cut it into six pieces, all six sides would be the exact same size and shape. You can also think of it as like a clock. If you cut the snowflake at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 o'clock, all of the sides would look the same. But snowflakes are really perfect. Sometimes it gets colder or sometimes it's more wet, so they all have different shapes. 
So now we are going to try to make our own six fold symmetrical snowflakes. And to do that, we are going to make a coffee filter snowflake. So today we are going to learn how to make a coffee filter snowflake. They're all gonna look different. They can be any color you want, um, but this is what they look like. I ended up laminating mine because it's a little bit flimsy and I knew I was gonna hang it up, but you can always just lay yours out flat and hang them on a window if you want to or something like that. So here is what you'll need to make your snowflake. So first thing is you'll need a coffee filter. That's what your snowflake is gonna be made out of. You'll need washable markers. I decided to use blue colors, but you can use any color you'd like. You'll need some paper towels because it's a little bit messy. You'll need a spray bottle with water in it. Um, you'll need some paper clips. And then you'll also need, if you want, you can make your snowflake look however you'd like, but I found these snowflake templates that are the perfect size for coffee filters. So you can use those if you want and I will put the link in the comments. All right, so the first thing you want to do to make your coffee filter snowflake is put something under your coffee filter. I have paper towels, but you can use newspaper or a paper plate, just anything um, so that your table doesn't get messy. Um, but then, you want to color your coffee filter. Um, this one, I started from the middle and did blue and then green and then purple and pink. So it kind of looked like tie dye, but this time I think I'm just gonna do color blotches all over. So I'm gonna color my coffee filter. And the more color you have on there and the less white there is, the more vibrant your snowflakes will be. Okay, so I have most of my coffee filter colored and there's just a little bit of white left, but I've got most of it. Um, and one thing to remember with this activity, we are going to be spraying water on these coffee filters. So the colors that you choose are actually going to run together a little bit and kind of look like tie dye again. So I'm done coloring. So that means that I I'm ready to spray my coffee filter. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your water bottle, your spray bottle, and you're just gonna spray your coffee filter. Watch closely as the colors kind of mix together. Okay, see how they're mixing together on there? So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Make sure they mix really well. And then I'm going to grab another paper towel and I'm just gonna kind of pat some water off of it. And that also kind of mixes the colors together a little bit more. Looks even pretty cool on the paper towel. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab two more dry paper towels and set my coffee filter on top of that so it'll dry faster. So now I'm gonna clean up a little bit while this dries and I'll be right back. My coffee filter is dry now, so we are ready to move on to the next step. I let this dry for about 45 minutes or so. The dry time will depend on how much water you sprayed on it. If you sprayed more water, it's gonna take a little bit longer to dry. But once yours is dry, we'll go ahead and move on to this next step, and that is making the snowflake. So, 
I'm gonna move my paper towel because it's already dry. It's not gonna leave marker anywhere. And I'm going to fold it. So we're gonna fold it a few times. And the first fold is going to be in half. So you're just going to take it and fold it kind of like a taco. Just like that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna fold it in half again. So it's kind of like a little triangle. And then, this is the tricky part, you're gonna fold it three times into thirds. So I'm going to fold it over until it looks like it's about halfway. And then I'm going to fold this other side over. So now it's an even smaller triangle. And when I unfold it, there are three sections. Okay, so now that I've got that, we can start cutting it. So I'm going to use one of the templates that I told you guys about. I've already got it cut out into the triangle shape and I am going to line that up on my coffee filter. And I'm going to use my paper clips to hold that on there. So I'm just going to paper clip that on. It works a lot better if you use smaller paper clips. Okay, and then when you cut your snowflake, you're going to cut along these lines here so that when you're done, you're gonna have a smaller shape. So I'm going to take my scissors I'm just going to cut along those lines. So I'm gonna start over here and cut the triangles out. So I've got one cut and cut the other one. Okay, and I'm actually gonna move this paper clip so that I can cut this out easier. Okay, and I've got that all cut. So I'm going to take my paper clips off and unfold my snowflake and see what it looks like. You wanna be kind of careful when you unfold it because they're a little bit fragile. Okay, starting to see its shape. And then unfold it completely and you have a snowflake. Now, like I said before, I laminated this snowflake because it is a little bit flimsy with the coffee filter, so you can laminate it if you want to. Um, I have a laminating machine, or you can buy the laminating sheets that stick together. Or, what I am probably going to do with this one is I'm going to lay it under a book to flatten it out a little bit, and then I'm just going to tape it up on the wall um, where I'd like it to hang. So. I can't wait to see your snowflakes. If you want to, you guys can post pictures in the comments and I'll take a look at them. Thanks again for watching. You guys are the best. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.